and in Samathon, to you I call, but you will surely heed me. O oh God, turn your ear to me, hear my words. Call me as the apple of your eye, and the shadow of your wings protect me. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's Mass has been offered for us and our families, and in particular, Kenneth Ritter Sr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by pausing to call to mind our sins and asking God for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of the heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. <coughs> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through the Spirit and the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length, height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine, by the power and work within us, to him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Responsorial Psalm. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the heart. With a ten string line, ch tr uh, chant his praises. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart for all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of that. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather, division. 
From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. So we use the word paradox to mean something that seems to be a contradiction on its face, but actually, a greater reflection, it's, it's true. It's holding kind of two opposite things that ordinarily would not go together, but somehow they do. That's, that's what a paradox is. So the greatest paradox of Christianity is you have to die in order to rise in the end. You have to die to self in order to really live and thrive. And that's a paradox because everything in us tells us we should protect and preserve ourselves and keep ourselves from any kind of pain or suffering or dying. But that's the exact opposite of what Christianity is all about, what Jesus tells us. We are another paradox of the gospel today. Uh, in fact, Jesus did come to bring peace on earth, though he says he didn't. But he really did come to bring peace on earth because and certainly in John's Gospel, he says, Peace I leave with you. Peace is my great gift for you. So the Lord wants us to have peace, but it's a different kind of peace. The peace that he wants for us is an interior peace of being at one with God. And uh, therefore, no matter what is happening, no matter what the trials or the traumas of our life, or our family, or our community, uh, we can have the peace of Jesus uh, knowing that we're following the Lord and the Lord is taking care of us. That's the peace that he calls for. But externally, there may not be peace. And Jesus predicts that those who follow him uh, and who allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to take over in their lives and to guide them and to form them, that they're going to uh, encounter much division in their life. This is certainly something that people... Uh, experience all the time. Uh, when one, someone becomes a person on fire with their faith, and everybody else in their family or in their friend group or whatever, they're, they're not quite there yet. There can be a lot of tension and a lot of division among the family or the friend group or in the workplace. And it uh, really requires great prudence from the Holy Spirit to know uh, how to live our faith in a way that is public, but in a way that, that uh, doesn't turn people off and chase them away. Because there will be division. I think about uh, my years in the vocation office for the Archdiocese, having men come to me or women come to me thinking about priesthood or religious life and telling me the tremendous opposition that they were facing in their families. Their families were devastated with the news that they were thinking about priesthood or religious life. It caused a great tension and division uh, by their decision to try to follow Christ more faithfully. Now, happy to say most of those families eventually came around and became supportive of their child uh, in the journey to seminary or the journey to the convent, uh, the, the religious vocation. Uh, but it is true. Jesus says it's true. He, he, he calls it. He understands human nature. He's experienced this himself at this point in his ministry. He knows there's going to be opposition, tension, and division, as there'll be some people who think you are wasting your life by following Christ. A total waste of a wonderful life. Uh, and it's going to cause, uh, again, this, this division. And we need to really know, we really need to have the fire of the Holy Spirit, we need to be very close to Christ to stay uh, on track in our vocation. In fact, you know, when you read the lives of the saints, it almost seems like the majority of them faced opposition from their family when they wanted to follow Christ more faithfully and more fervently. It's like, a, it's, it's, it's hard to find a saint where the parents went, well, praise the Lord. We're so happy for all the things you're doing for God. No, it's, almost always the opposite. There are exceptions, but it's almost always the opposite. So when we see this kind of division, 
I mean, the first thought is that, oh, well, maybe, maybe this isn't it. Or, you know, maybe the Lord's not going to ever bring healing. Those, perish those thoughts. But just stay faithful to Christ. Christ does miracles uh, in the lives of families and friend groups and the greater community if we stay faithful to him. So let's pray that Jesus will set ablaze the fire of the Holy Spirit in all of us, in our loved ones, and in our community. Amen. We bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father, for the church. May God's glory shine brightly through his service to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations, may the Holy Spirit inspire them to place any division with the spirit of goodwill and cooperation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those traveling the long road of grief, may they know Christ's presence and rest in the confidence that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate and nine sciences, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Promsah, we will be spared damage to life and property during this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and our intentions to silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the Middle East and Ukraine, for an end to war, violence, and racism, for a culture that respects life and the values of God, that fallen away Catholics will come home to the practice of the faith, that gospel values will lead our electorate as we vote in important elections. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. As we continue to pray the Novena for Life from the U.S. Bishops' Conference, Today, the third day of the Novena, we pray for all who suffer for having participated in an abortion. Uh, for those who suffer and they uh, struggle with unforgiveness, uh, may they find God's healing in Christ's unending mercy. Let us uh, join our prayers now for this particular intention of the day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray one Hail Mary for faith, one for hope, and one for love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, please hear our prayers for life and all the other intentions that we bring to you today and our personal needs as well. And we make these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that although the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the challenge of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marriage be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, today, being Thursday, we have our food bank open beginning at uh, 9 a.m. this morning in the Ave Maria house. Uh, we've been serving 30 to 40 families a week. So I want to give thanks to all of the uh, members of that, um, all of those who participate in that ministry. It's a great gift to the community. Uh, we also will have a abbreviated church cleaning uh, after this Mass, as we have a funeral at 10.30 today, and the family's arriving at 9.15. Uh, tonight, we have three things. We have the Women's Bible Study in the Parish Center, Walking the Purpose, that's at 7 p.m. We also have Young Adult Faith Formation in uh, St. Joseph Hall, that's also at 7 p.m. And in church at 7 p.m., we have Jen Fulweiler, the uh, uh, woman who was atheist and became Catholic, mother of six children, and a renowned comedian. She'll be here to talk about her journey and uh, the gift of life. Everyone is invited at 7 o'clock tonight in church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snare of the devil. May God, if you can be humbly pray, do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who follow God the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.